Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palne Pramanikam. In this video, we're going to talk about artificial sweeteners, whether you can use it or not. I'm going to tell you my opinion. Let's dive deep into it. The first artificial sweetener, saccharin, was identified in 1879 at John Hopkins University through an accident. The scientist was doing something else and he spilled something, a chemical, by accident and it tasted so sweet, 50 to 100 times more sweeter than the actual sugar. This substance turned out to be saccharin, which was later commercialized as sweet and low. Most of the artificial sweeteners are discovered by accident, exactly similar to my friend Saravna Kumar who was born by accident and giving us bitter experiences. So sweeteners can be two types, artificial sweeteners and natural sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners are chemically synthesized substances to resemble the taste of sugar. They are not derived naturally, they are derived artificially. Once I bought a cooling glass, it was written Ray-Ban, it was very cheap. I bought it, when you look closely, it is written Raj Band. The most popular artificial sweetness available in the market is Splenda which is sucralose, Equal which is aspartate, Sweet and Low which is the first artificial sweetener, saccharine. They are significantly sweeter than sugar so it gives you the pleasure of having sugar but it is not actual carbohydrates. On the other hand, natural sweeteners are extracted from plant sources. They might be modified a little bit for digestive purposes but in general they are original natural naturally derived from plant-based sources. The most commonly used plant-based sweeteners are stevia and monk fruit sweetener. My patient Aro Kesami has been trying to extract a sweetener from a plant called cannabis. The problem with these artificial sweeteners and natural sweeteners is that it is being forced into the food supply without rigorous testing in humans. Most of the studies are only in animal studies. So are these artificial and natural sweeteners are bad for you? To understand this, you need to understand how insulin works in our fasting method. As you know, the method that I'm promoting, sunrise to sunset method, we take care of the insulin because we give rest to insulin for at least 12 hours overnight. And during the day, if we can decrease the workload of insulin by decreasing the carbohydrate, then your insulin will be happy if there is insulin resistance, which means there's a lot of insulin, but it is not working properly. It will slowly start to work back again, decreasing the insulin resistance, increasing the effectiveness, thereby reversing chronic diseases. This is the bottom line. So how these artificial sweeteners are being pitched in is because it does not have any calories, it does not have any carbohydrates, there will not be insulin spike, so insulin will be happy. This is the pitch that they are providing. But is that actually true? Yes and no. Yes, it doesn't have carbohydrates. But some studies have suggested that even with a small dose of artificial sweetness, there could be some insulin spike. But this is much, much less than the insulin spike we get from sugary foods like, you know, soda, ice cream, dessert, pizza, you name it. Since the insulin spike is less and also the amount of calorie going in is also less, there is weight loss if you use these products that have been proven by studies as well. However, the most important problem is this is only short term. A recent analysis of all the studies published say that regular consumption of artificial sweetness on a daily basis can lead to cardiovascular disease and sometimes even cancer based on the analysis. Again, the data is not very strong. It is suggesting a possible potential link. Based on this information, WHO has recommended that please do not use artificial sweetness on a long-term basis for a weight loss substitute. So you might have seen all these influencers claiming that, oh, artificial sweetness are completely bad. WHO has claimed that this artificial sweetener cannot be used for weight loss at all. That is not true. We don't have enough data yet. So I'm going to tell you what I do myself and also on my patients with the respect to artificial sweetness. So remember the start of the video, we said that there are two kinds of sweetness artificial which is chemically synthesized natural which is plant-based derivative obviously if you're following my channel you would have known that I always promote natural foods and not processed or packaged
package food so i'm going to remove splenda equal sweet and low completely out of the table so now we are left with plant based sweeteners which is stevia and monk fruit i prefer stevia because there is some kind of adverse effects associated with monk fruit sweetener again the data is not that strong if you prefer monk fruit i think it is okay but i prefer stevia because of this possible adverse effect with monk fruit but the key thing is whether you use stevia or you use monk fruit it has to be short term there is definitely a role for these plant based sweeteners on short term to encourage weight loss in people who badly needs motivation so let me explain a situation here you have a patient who is trying to lose weight he has tried multiple levels multiple interventions nothing is happening he is losing motivation in that case scenario i will use stevia or monk fruit sweetener as a sugar replacement in the first couple of months where he is able to achieve some reasonable targeted goals which will motivate him so that he can jump on the weight loss journey on a long term basis and there is no study to say that short term use of plant based sweeteners are significantly at risk for any kind of adverse events at all so i use this advantage to my patients and make them see the results make them motivated and they will go to the next level of getting their health outcome to the goal that they want because they have seen the results already so once they are aligned with their outcome once they are in cruise control then i will make them cut down on the plant based sweeteners and make sure that they don't use it on a long term but now since they have a goal and they are in the process to reach that goal and they are motivated it will be an easier switch to take off of stevia and then just focus on whole foods unprocessed foods non packaged foods even actually using regular sugar within their macro limits so i strictly recommend against use of these artificial sweeteners and also plant based sweeteners on a long term basis and this is what i tell my patients that when you are looking to buy artificial sweeteners you buy it at a local grocery store like target where you can buy for like a month or two and not at a wholesale grocery store like costco where you can buy it for 6 months i told my patient arokya sami if you continue to use artificial sweeteners and i need to give you tonic and syrup on a long term basis and he's asking whether that tonic and syrup will contain artificial sweetener the biggest myth i want to break is using these sweeteners either artificial or plant based will not decrease your sugar cravings at all this has been proven multiple times we talked about this before as well that sugar cravings can be decreased by replacing the sugar with something else that your bad bacteria needs for example it could be nuts it could be fruits with sugar content so then you don't give the actual sugar it is a de addiction process it is going to take some time so don't get demotivated if your method is not working be consistent keep on feeding nuts keep on feeding fruits whenever you are craving for sugar in summary sweeteners do have a role in weight loss in my practice i use stevia which is a plant based sweetener and i use it on a short term basis for a couple of months where i can actually show some results to the patient to keep them motivated and then take them off so that they will be at a level where they can figure out what are the content that could be included in the macros and until the patient reaches that level in my practice i do use stevia on my patients including myself as well in short term and i agree with all the influencers out there including who that artificial sweeteners and natural sweetness on long term basis is not a good option because it might be associated with cardiovascular disease and cancer again remember the link is not that strong if people who stay with you for a long term is called sweetheart then people who stay with you for a short term in disguise as a sweetheart should be called artificial sweetener heart share this video with a friend who uses splenda for his coffee but he eats a big black volcano molten cake without splenda put down in the comment section whether do you use artificial sweetness or plant based sweetness if so what kind and how long remember one belly at a time it is absolutely important i'll see you in the next video bye bye